If you work with large lists of data, database type lists, like the one we're seeing on the screen right now, this is in the table sheet in the formatting workbook, the feature called table in Excel is primarily visual, but you also get some calculation capability with it as well. Suppose this data is dynamic. We're going to be adding records from time to time. We'll be taking out records. We might even be adding some new fields to this. If we want to treat this data as a unit, converting it into a table is going to help us retain that capability. You can get to this feature in two major ways. From the Home tab, you'll see a choice called Format as Table off to the right. Also, on the Insert tab, you'll see a choice called Table. If the active cell is within the data, and it can be anywhere within here, that's our starting point, maybe we'll just use the option here, Insert Table. Excel immediately analyzes what it sees and describes the entire location. This data actually goes down to row 742. And it also picks up on the idea that your table has headers. And you want to, again, do a quick visual check and make sure it checks this if you do have those headers, which normally you would have. Click OK. And suddenly it displays this in a different format, referred to as banded rows. Recognize we have a new ribbon called Table Tools with a Design tab on it. Off to the right, we see Table Styles. Now, Simply by sliding over these, we see a different appearance. And if we click the drop arrow here, we're seeing over 60 different choices. We'll just make a choice, say that one. The so-called banded row idea could be one you want to retain. Recognize that in the design tab, that's active whenever the active cell is within the data. In other words, if we click out here, we don't see a design tab. Click in here. Now we do see the Design tab. We may want to turn off Banded Rows and choose Banded Columns. And by the way, when you do that, the Table Style options over here also reflect those changes, the fact that we now have Banded Columns instead. I think you're more likely to want to use Banded Rows, but you can go either way here. You can give special emphasis to the first column. It simply will make the text bold. In addition to making it bold, with some of the color options, it will also apply color to the first column on the left and possibly the last column on the right, if you wish. You may or may not know how to use Excel's filtering capability. The filtering arrows come with a table. If you're not going to use the feature or don't need to use it just yet, here's an option up here to uncheck the filter arrows so that they're not visible. When you start to scroll up and down, look what happens to row one. The data in row one, the title row, essentially gets thrown into where we currently see the column letters. So we're not seeing the column letters anymore. And that so-called banded look, one of the thoughts might be, well, what happens if we add a new row here? Maybe we're going to type in a new entry. If we were to click row five, certainly one way, if we wanted to add a new row here, we can go to the Home tab insert sheet row and watch the banded row concept automatically kick in. Now, we're not going to put any data there maybe just yet, but we do see how it automatically readjusts that every other row banded look. We change our minds maybe to undo that. We'll just simply press control Z. Now, if we're going to add additional data to the right here, suppose we're going to put in some more information here in column J. Maybe eventually we're going to have a new salary out there. As I type this entry here, that column automatically becomes part of the table. If I write a formula here, it will automatically be copied into all the cells below it. So I'll just make a simple adjustment here. I'm going to type equal H2 plus 1,000. In other words, we're going to give everybody $1,000 more on the new salaries. Look what happens when I press Enter. Well, that's a calculation type feature as we talk about what is primarily a formatting tool here. But that gives greater weight to the idea of why you might want to use a table. You may or may not have used charts if you convert data into a table and then base a chart on that data as the 
data grows, the chart will reflect the growth as well, too. I'll scroll down to the bottom. We might also want to consider adding a total row here. If we click on the Design tab, we can now add a total row. We don't want to total all these columns, and we don't necessarily want to do an actual total for salaries, although we could. If we click the drop arrow right here in this last cell, we could choose to display the average instead. And possibly with job rating, we'd want to do the same kind of thing. Click there, click the drop arrow, average. And in this example here, we certainly would want to change that format, go to the Home tab, and not show as many decimals there. Probably one would be sufficient. So here and there, you might want to show totals by summing or possibly by averaging. And we don't have to do all these. Now, what happens if we wanted to add a new record at the bottom? What we would do here is disable, by way of the Design tab, the total row. But it's going to come back in its same format. I'm just going to type in just the name, Smith, Joe. As soon as I type that, that, of course, is now part of the table. If we click within the data and go to the Design tab, choose the total row, it's back in place. We can see the data better as we look left and right here because of the color scheme. And you'll change your mind about the color scheme. It's so easy to make a change here as to how you want this to look. If you want to convert this back into a standard non-table look, make sure the active cell is within the table, the Design tab is active, and then over on the left-hand side in the Tools group, you'll see Convert to Range. Now, it's going to keep the colors in place, at least for the moment, but you'll see the option here. You'll choose Yes. And if you want to take out the colors manually, you might as well click in the upper left corner. We'll go to the Fill Color bucket here, choose No Fill, and we're back to a non-table appearance, as well as the fact that it's no longer a table. You have the option. I think it's worth exploring. It's a good visual tool, and it makes database-like data easier to read and to work with.